So, George, it's uh, a year since the big event uh, that you hosted that also took place in Rachel. Give me a general sense of how you feel about that experience. I know there's some good, some bad. What you've learned and um, whether it's going to happen again. Well, the one thing I've learned, you know, because I, I, I consider myself somewhat of a ufologist, nothing like all the real ufologists, but I'm a big believer, you know, that we're not the only beings in this, in this universe. And, and the Storm Area 51 had an element to it, which was a large element, way over a thousand people that were interested in what is going on at Area 51. Uh, you know, going up to the event, you know, the, the, the county had a lot of angst. Um, there were people angry with me, people angry with the, the, the lady out in Rachel because somehow they thought we were putting it on. But we, once we explained to everybody, look, this was a meme done by a, a, a nerdy kid that lives in his mom's basement and plays video games all day. They, they got the, you know, they got the idea that, oh, and I said, so we can't start, whether we do anything or not, if we just close, you know, there's still going to be, at that time, everybody thought the number was about 30,000 people that were going to come up. So I said, you know, let's embrace this and let's make it good for tourism, which is what we've all, you know, been striving for, for years anyways, when they named the extraterrestrial highway. So then everybody got on board. And, uh, you know, George, you were there. We had this, we, we had this grand event. It's a little frustrating that some people thought that, uh, you know, that, you know, only 2000 people came up or they, you know, we know from our numbers, what we counted that we believe over the two day period, there was about 8,600 people. And, and, and we felt comfortable with that. Um, we were lucky because there was a guy, as you know, very famous, a uh, guy named Paul Oakenfield, who's a DJ, who paid his way on his private jet from England to come to Nevada, rented a $2 million motorhome, and came up and, and played music. And I got the frustrated. So there was a few frustrating things for me. One of the frustrating things is people said, oh, well, one, no one believed he was there, which is true. And Paul said, no, guys, I'm really here. And they said only 200 people listened to him. When he was playing at the top of the thing, we had about 850 people listening to him. So it, it, it just, it was just frustrating. Um, and did we lose money? Yeah, I lost a lot of money. But, you know, and, and, and I had people make fun of me. Oh, you know, this guy lost like 40 grand, which is true. I think I lost $42,000. But George, I got $10 million in free advertising worldwide. And I think you'll verify that. I think you did too. Uh, Duncan, you want to jump into this? Yeah. Um, so a year has passed at this point. Um, obviously, like you said, you got a lot of free advertising. Has that really helped out your business? And, and did you have plans and do you have plans, but more, did you have plans during COVID times here to, to hold another event, even virtually? So w we wouldn't do it virtually, but Jerry Corbell, you know, has, has, uh, has agreed to participate again. We, we are gonna do something um, in October, but until the governor lifts the, uh, the COVID restrictions, there's not much we can do. Now, I believe that, that it'll probably be done the first quarter of next year, and I think we'll get about 1,200 people to show up. But this time it's gonna be really a lot more UFO-centric. We'll have classes. We'll have, hopefully, if, if George is available, George will come up and we'll be, we'll be bringing, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Mr. Goodall back up and, you know, people that really, you know, can, can give classes and, and give good conversation. Would you be calling it the same thing or are you coming up with a new name? Well, we're not going to call it Storm Area 51 because, the, because of what that kid did. Uh, um, that kid did and everything, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just, it, so uh, it, it would be, you know, it would be the continue of the storm or it'll be something fun. We've got a couple of names in the works, but we just want people to come up and, and, and enjoy the area and see the area and, and be able to come up and talk about uh, Area 51 and UFOs. You know, the local officials, even state officials were legitimately worried when there's, you know, those predictions about, you know, a million people or more, two million people said they were coming. Obviously, that was never going to happen. 
but even 30,000 people would have been overwhelmed the services out there. So they were, they had concerns. Since then, there have been discussions about lawsuits for people who are involved. Has anyone been sued? And what's the attitude of local government, you think, now, a year later? So you're, okay, so there, my understanding there, and I don't know, but there are lawsuits uh, with the Rachel people and, and that kid, um, Maddie, Roberts. Maddie, Maddie Roberts, because Maddie was an, a, a, a horrible actor. He, 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 was, he was not an honest guy. Um, he wasn't honest with me. You know, he and his pal came to me and they tried to tell me, oh, well, we're going to bring you all these people and we want 50% of your business. It just, just and, you know, and I just told the kid he was insane and I, I just ignored him. Um, and then he, then he moved the thing down to the D. It was a big failure down there. Look, this is, the, when it comes out to it, it was a kid who lived in his mom's basement and played video games. That's how he described himself to me. I didn't find him to be, uh, I, he's very innocuous, but apparently there were some monies and stuff that were uh, taken uh, out in Rachel. I mean, if you look at the news accounts, and I think that there's ongoing uh, legal action. I think the county looked at suing him for some of the stuff he did. I don't think they went forward with that. But the one good thing that came out of this, George, is that they were, you're right, the county and the state, they were all very concerned that they would have 30,000 people up there. So Clark County, uh, uh, Lincoln County, the state, they had, what, what did come out of it is they had one of the largest um, um, interdepartmental uh, operations that was very successful with the federal government, with three different counties. I mean, Marilyn Kirkpatrick came up and she spent the weekend up there helping them organize stuff. So that's one good thing that came out of it. Would you anticipate that Lincoln County, the sheriff, or the officials out there, county commission, would be supportive of another event, say next year? I absolutely think they would. They've already told me they would. Because they know we can, look, because now it would be us planning it. It would be in conjunction with Sheriff Lee and with the county commissioners, and, and they're wonderful people. And they want Lincoln County to have good tourism, but they want it to be planned. And, you know, there's a big difference, you know, when you can plan for 1,200 people um, and then, you know, be told, you know, in a 30-day in a period, 30,000 people are going to show up, you know, in your county. You know, you've got ecosystems you got to worry about. There's, there's a bunch of different things. But, yeah, they're, they're, they're very open and very supportive of, of all the stuff I do. And, and I know they're very supportive of everything that happens out in Rachel. Now that, that uh, brings another question to my mind is uh, for, for the average person that maybe doesn't know exactly, I know the back roads out there, I know how to get there, I know where you're located, and I know you're not Rachel. Uh, you're not in the, the community of Rachel. Uh, can you describe to us the, the difference between your operation, the Little Alien, Area 51? Um, this happened, you know, last year, a year, year ago from now, we were talking a lot about how people just wanted to go out there and they didn't understand. You can't just go out there. This is the middle of the desert. Well, it is. So, you know, we're, we're ab about uh, 90 minutes out of Las Vegas, okay? Um, and we're, we're one, exactly one mile from the entrance of the uh, extraterrestrial highway. So I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and the road's paved, and if you take, if you take from, our, from, our, from our building if you drive 20 miles on the extraterrestrial highway and you look to your left, you'll see a dirt road that looks like it's going to heaven. That's the dirt road that takes you to the back gate. Now, then you'd still have to drive another 28 miles to go to Rachel. Rachel technically isn't in Area 51, actually has nothing to do with Area 51 other than that was the place that, that got a great reputation. Because, in fact, from the back gate, Area 51 is to the south, about... Um, about 39 miles. You know, I was lucky enough to, uh, to go on Area 51. I was an expert witness in the Sheehan court case where the Sheehan's property was taken by the government. And uh, I, was, I was an expert, you know, on business and, and if they wanted to build a hotel and turn it in, you know, to a thing because you can actually see the base from their property. So I've been there. I mean, I'm one of a very few select people that have probably been on Area 51. Um, so 
it's it's uh, it's absolutely it, it's everything everybody thinks. The lore is is very credible because I was I was at the edge of Groom Lake at the Sheehan's Ranch, looking out back down to the base, uh, which was about nine and a half miles. And from nine and a half miles, it was absolutely amazing. I could see the buildings. I could see, you know, I, I you know, w- when we were escorted, we had we had 25, uh, 25 uh, military guys escorting us up through their property. It, it was it was a, it was a surreal adventure. It was just phenomenal. So if I were to come up there this weekend, uh, I I don't get that view. I take it. You don't get that view. What you get is you go up, and you drive up the dirt road, and you become you come upon. Uh, a gate with the uh, Constantina wire and uh, listening devices and 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 cameras and then if you look to your right up on a little mountain there's a white truck with two guys with machine guns sometimes those guys travel down sometimes they're out of the truck and you can see the machine guns but that's a very rare instance uh, if you come up during red flag it's even funner because if you're up there and you hang out too long you might get a visit uh, you might get a visit from an Apache helicopter telling you to leave the area. Do you expect, given that this weekend is uh, the one year, do you expect people more than normal to come up, even during okay. COVID? Oh, okay. definitely. We, we, we probably have gotten 80 inquiries on Facebook. Are you guys doing anything? <laughs> um, we're open. You know, we open up every morning at 8 o'clock and close at 5, and, and people that are coming down the highway um, that want to see it. Our business has increased probably probably 40% since the storm because it was all over the world. So now when people are on vacation, they go take they want to come and take a look. Of course, there was media there from all over the world. As you said, you got millions of dollars in free publicity from those articles that were written and stories that were done. A lot of them made fun, poked fun at the event and the people who were there. And yet it still produced a lot of scrutiny about the base. And I think it probably exposed millions of people all over the world to uh, the, the lore about Area 51. So in that sense, it succeeded in elevating the, the public awareness of what goes on out there. Well, that, that's the one thing, George. I, I have to agree with you. People, you know, people will sit and tell me, you know, oh, well, it's fun or they poke fun and everything. But what it did do is it didn't stop the fact that people want to know what's going on Area 51. And the government is keeping their side of the agreement. They're not going to admit or deny anything happens up there. So that that yin and yang relationship is going to continue for the <laughs> probably for the next hundred years. So uh, a year from now, we'll be preparing for something that happens out at uh, the Alien Research Center at Heiko and maybe at Rachel as well. I, I, I hope so. I, and, you know... I, Hopefully this time Rachel and I will work together. You know, there was this whole thing. Someone tried to start a big war between us. There's no war. I'm actually good friends with Pat. She's wonderful. Uh, you know, people that come into our store every day, come into the research center and we tell them, look, cause we don't have food. We say, if you're going on into Rachel, you know, that the food is great bar food. It, it really is. It's, 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 it's good bar food and it's a great place to go. And it's just a little bar. And they're nice people. And, uh, you know, they're 42 miles away from us. So there's no way we can be competitors. 